We, you are watching a master at work. Uh, all right. Yes, yes, y'all. And it don't stop. Once again, we back. I told y'all we gonna be back, too. Them niggas thought we weren't gonna be back. They thought Clyde Smith was gone. They thought there was gonna be no more Sunday's best. They thought, uh, nah, we here. We're out here. We're back with the rebrand, with the reformat once again, like we never left. I got my, hold on. We're gonna get there, actually, though. But hold on. Let me just talk my shit, you know? Sunday's best podcast. We got Wave in the goddamn building. Wave Montego, Monte. Dang. Yeah, gang, gang, of course, right? But yes, you know, <laughs> we good. Sunday's best podcast. Puppy else in the building. Shout out. Thank you. You know, came through with the gang. <laughs> huh? What was that? One time. One time for the culture. One time for the culture. Yeah, of course. And we got a wave in the building, like I said. So um, I just like to get into this because, like, the way it came together for me, shout out Pate, again, base Pate for... for you know putting us on the same frequencies you know nice and you know he saw he saw what i was doing and uh, you know wave reached out and was like you know i'm trying to get on the platform i'm trying to shed some knowledge i'm trying to talk out here you know so thank you for coming through you know okay no thank you for being on the platform i appreciate that i feel like um i feel like there's a lot like to get into uh you just dropped one of your tracks spalding right yeah yeah spalding. that's booming on spotify mm. right now itty bitty spalding oh man i like that track yeah spalding's going crazy right now fam so spalding specifically is it just like coming from a place of inspiration and motivation like for ball is there like some deeper like meaning with it yeah there's definitely a deeper meaning with it still like spalding that's a song where it's like i'm talking about ball but mm -hmm. And everybody has their spot, you feel me? Everybody has their thing that they pursue, their thing that they, they're passionate about, like, you feel me? So it's, it's, really, it's, really, it's relatable, fam. Why not a Wilson, though? Nah. Nah, I can't be Wilson. Spot, fam. That's <laughs> spot, fam. Some people prefer the Wilson. I mean, so if it's your Wilson, it's your Wilson. If, if your spot then is, is fucking drying, if it's, if it's whatever, you feel me? That's your spot then. And, so and rapping, stuff. that's your spot then? That's my spot. That's your grind like that? That's my grind. Okay. Um, well, like, you don't have, like, a saw. Like, you have a whole bunch of these tracks that slap like that that are out in these streets. And, like, they're they're picking up, like, heat on, on the socials and on the streaming services. But, like, is there going to be sort of a solid, like, project or, like, an EP or something that, like, we're going to get in the future? Or are you just kind of testing the waters with, like, the, the, the one-off singles right now? Yeah, like, hopefully, hopefully towards the end of the summer, I'm going to get, like, I'm going to get a project out there. Um, I have two in the works right now. Two Not projects? Sure. Yeah, two. Um, it's nothing solid, but working on it, seeing what's going to come from it still. So we'll see. Hopefully okay. Towards the end of summertime. And like the visuals too, because I feel like there's so much that you kind of have like with your own persona and like the way that you, like your music period, because you got the bars, you've got the melodies that, you know, people enjoy in today's landscape of music. And you like, it comes from a real place. Like there's a <coughs> real authenticity and substance that comes with your music too. So, you know, I'm interested to see, like, a full project and see you kind of put that into play, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, first, like, first coming out, sharing my shit with people, like, I wanted to just come out and, like, show people that, feel me, I have talent, like, I'm not just going to come out and sound like everybody else. Like, me, like, I don't like to, like, feel me, sound like nobody else do what everybody else does, fam, like. That, how do you feel about that then too because we're we're in toronto right and there can be almost people can describe it somewhat as like an oversaturation of like like there's too much rappers there's too many people pursuing that you know yeah, yeah. and it's like i on one hand i agree where it's like yo every person's trying to show you like and promote a soundcloud or something but then it's like Yo, we've really got such an incredible pool of talent of like actual people that have something to offer here, you know? So do you like kind of find it like difficult? Like, or do you find like there are too many people rapping? Do you feel like there's too many lames like in the scene or something? Like, or do you find like those people with that perspective are the ones that are kind of hating? Nah, I feel like, yo, it's art fam. Like art is art fam. Like mm -hmm. me, everyone could create, everybody, everybody could be their own artist. Like. But I do feel like the some people that have certain platforms, they got to use it better. I'm like, feel me? Like, the shit that's, I don't know. I just feel like there's, you can't say there's too much artists, like, feel me? Like, everybody has to do their thing, like. But in terms of the sound, like, I don't like to come out sound like nobody else. Like, I'm the type of nigga, like, my shit is, my, my movement is ATG against, you, against the green. So, like, okay. it's like, me, like, I, I, I like going against the green. If I see people doing this shit, I'm doing that, like, feel me? So me coming out like i'll hit you with this and then i'm gonna hit you with that but coming it, from a project perspective i'm gonna solidify like 
Like, you're gonna hear my sound, like, my real sound, but, like, I'm gonna mix it up, I'm gonna do different shit, like. Okay, so, like, on a song-by-song, song, like, basis, how would that work then? So, it's, like, if you get a beat or something, and it's, like, mm -hmm. hey, I gotta separate myself then, like, what is it, what's your mindset going into that? Like, how do you make that distinction yourself? Like how I approach yeah, like, yeah, yeah. a song? Yeah, yeah, like, with, with that mindset, too, because I feel like a lot of people have the cookie cutter like hey i'm gonna go with the wave i'm gonna not <laughs> i'm gonna go with like you know what, what everybody else is doing right mm -hmm. but um and and they try and re recreate something that's already existing that's already popular and you're saying like you go against that so it's like yeah. if you get if, if you're starting a song like what how do you start with it like what's your approach with it i mean i don't really have i don't know if i'm like it just it just comes to be to me to be honest like i could tell you the way i approach like when i'm creating do you write yeah, yeah, I'm a writer, fam. Like before any, before everything, I was writer. Like even when I was like, when I was like grade one, grade two, I was mm -hmm. writing poetry, fam. Like to the point where like I wasn't paying attention in, in class. I used to write poetry like all day. My teacher would come and take my book, like yo, what is this? And get cheese. Then she'd read the shit, and then she gave it to the principal. Yeah. And then they started a poetry club. Like damn, I, I was leading the shit. And I'm like <laughs> yo, seven years old. Okay. Type shit, like, you know so I mean? it's in your was, blood. Yeah, yeah. I was always a writer, fam. But like. I write all my shit like I'm not type of niggas and going to free in the in the shit and like I could like I've done yeah. it before but I prefer to get the best out of myself I'm gonna write like to be honest that's why I fuck with you that's why I like your music and why I want you on the platform because that's like refreshing I feel like a lot of niggas are doing that they just kind of not to like knock like, those dudes or anything yeah, yeah, because yeah. a lot of good music some, comes some, that way. Are, some people are great at it too like, yeah you know what I mean? like but. the Jay Z and Rick Ross all of them make their music that way but it's like there's something different that comes from like when you're actually taking the time with every syllable and every like word and you're really putting yourself into it you know so it's like yeah. that's that's really dope to hear that like you're like really into it from like a writer's perspective um that's dope though that like they took your whole shit like yeah, fam, I took my book, <laughs> you're a kid and then they start the whole poetry club this poetry ice cube club. ass nigga writing poetry in the corner they're too scared to say anything <laughs> that they take it. it's like oh dude, he's on some shit um what else should i get into on the music um i told you my favorite track um actually you know what because we're on like the topic of toronto i feel like you know you were featured in uh 93.5's Made in Toronto movement, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Which track was it that they had Spalding <clears throat> on there? Nah, they didn't have Spalding on there. Spalding got some radio play, but I don't even know where, fam. Okay. I don't even know where it was playing, but I know 93.5 played Tell You Nah, and they played Show Me, they played Not Show Me Love. They played Tell You Nah, and they played um, It Don't Take Much, featuring my nigga Grease. Shout out and Grease. Shout out Gotta get him on the platform, too. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I, I like when I get an artist that was featured on that platform, like, in, and I can kind of pick his brain on this, because I felt like there's so many other artists that may have not been featured on it, and they have, like, a whole-ass opinion about, like, oh, you know, Flo might be just, like, doing this, you know, and giving people the light, but really, it's bigging up Flo more than anybody, and they're kind of taking, like, those fan bases from artists like you that mm. kind of have that, like, you know, you're out in the streets and you're building a fan base, and it kind of all that goes towards flow and and it benefits them more that's this is kind of the opinion that you know people have, might yeah, be yeah. on the internet i you know I, I think it's toronto we all should show love and you know getting featured on the premier hip-hop radio station in our city is well, that's a privilege fam. exactly like, right i think like there's a lot of kids fam that like just might have just submitted their shit to flow and then they're just on the radio the next day they would have never thought they'd be on the radio that's a blessing fam like that puts into, into perspective for you, like, it's possible that like, you could be heard. You know what I mean? Say yeah. if your shit is good and they hear you on the radio, then you never know what could happen. You never know what's listening to the radio. Do you, do you think, though, like, that there could be, like, sort of a, like, a connotation in Toronto where people don't want to fuck with each other? Like, people don't support one another? That there's, like, almost like a, like an internal civil, like, hate like with each other that we don't want to put each other we don't want to big each other up because like i feel like a lot of people have that sentiment too yeah i feel like i feel like it's hard to get like to, for other people to show love yeah fam like you, you if you look at artists in other countries in other cities in like the states and shit like that like a, artists in a small city in like texas could be gucci just off being in texas just because everybody in that area fucks with him like mm -hmm. everybody is coming to his shows everybody's supporting him but it's like toronto like you have to you have to make noise somewhere else and then come back to Toronto. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right, you're, you, you know what I mean? I read you now. Like, you're valid now. Like, it's kind of weird, but whatever, fam. Like, at the end of the day, fam, I think if you make good music, it's going to last. Another thing is, like, you feel me? A lot of the music, I'm not saying it's bad music, yeah. but there's, you know when you're time, this music. Like, 
that shit, people are going to hear it, and it's undeniable. You're not going to be able to deny it. But a lot of the shit that's intertwined and, like, it has a whole bunch of politics behind it or it has, like, you feel me? Some, something, something, like, other than just the music behind it that's fueling it, yeah. it's not going to last. When that shit's gone, the music that you, the music that you made about that shit is going to be gone, too. So. so what do you think, like, to change that sort of mentality then how do you do you think it's a change in attitude do you think it's like an infrastructure thing because like another point too there isn't a lot of podcast talk type things there isn't mm. a lot of blogs there's only one radio station the flow 93.5 you know there isn't a whole lot of infrastructure that's the same shit that we we're talking about before when you said is there too many artists yeah like podcast pe- people who run podcasts like you you're, you're an artist too you're creative yeah, too. of like, course people yeah. on radio are creatives too fam so like there's not enough of that. Like, they need, we need more. At the same time, we need more variety. Like, I feel like a lot of the music in Toronto is one-sided. Not to say it only is, but, like, the shit that you're going to hear that people are going to pop make popular is going to be in a certain lane. Yeah. You feel me? So that's why, like, I'm not to say that I'll, like, I go against the grain, but, like, you feel me? I'm going to talk my shit, but I'm going to say I'm going to I'm gonna give it to you in this way or that way. Like, I'm going to mix it up, like. I feel like people need to open their eyes to the art, to the to the artistry. Like, there's not, you feel me? Like, it's art, fam. Art, mm-hmm. it's it's a widespread. You have to. So then, to, like, do you think there's people kind of taking advantage of the fact that it is an art form, right? Like, it's like the way hip hop started. It's young black people affirming their voices and you know having an avenue to actually express themselves. Now there's there, there's some fuck shit, right? Yeah, like yeah. there are niggas that are capping about gang ties. There's niggas capping about how much money they have. There's ca- there's all types of bullshit with that, you know, mm-hmm. and it and it gets lumped into the same thing. Like, you know, hit six nine is also Kendrick Lamar because they're both hip hop. Like, the, an outsider's perspective kind of looks at it that way, you know. So yeah, like, yeah, yo, I seen is, a I seen a Russ interview from where mm-hmm. Russ was talking about like, with Joe Budden. With Joe Budden, wash he him down there if you need it. <laughs> he was, yeah, do your yeah. thing. He was talking about like how, like, the hip hop, like culture is being mediated by like little kids on the internet like, yeah you feel me and it's yeah. kind of true like it's kind of true like hip-hop's not what it used to be it's like i don't know it's not it's not what it used to be like because <laughs> you were saying how there's like a saying right where it's like yo this is hip-hop what are you talking about mm. and then joe was kind of saying like yo, you can't really say that anymore like what is, what hip-hop, is hip-hop right yeah, yeah, yeah. and i think the important thing to take away from that is like yeah yo like there's 13 year old kids that dictate the streams like who's popping you know because they're mm. listening they also buy these expensive ass tickets that are on the floor in these arenas and stuff that are two hundred dollars a ticket. You know, it's not niggas in the hood that are buying those concert tickets, right? Yes. So, do you, they're they're almost it's like a grain of salt. You gotta almost respect them a little bit because it's like they have still doing something. Like, yeah, you they to, you have to give them their credit. Yeah, they are consuming. They are the consumers, right? Like, but they shouldn't are, be the main shit. Like, that shouldn't be like the face of hip hop. Like, there's certain people who I feel like are doing hip hop. That are bigger than they not bigger than they should be, but like their voice is heard too much, and then the effect that it has on like, for example, the youth them like, you feel me? You see it, fam? Like, yeah. I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna say no one in particular, but the, you know what I'm talking. You can about, if like, you want to. Nah, nah, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> it's not positivity, fam. But like, hey, I like my that. My point I is like, like that. okay, you feel me? Like, okay, for example, let me speak from my perspective. Yeah, like, yeah I'm not yeah, gonna come do. out like I could come out here and talk about all the shit I've done, all the shit I've been through, like glamorize shit. But like, I'm thinking about the bigger picture at the same time. Like, I'm still gonna tell you. I'm still gonna tell you my story. But at the same time, I'm conscious to where like, I'm thinking about who's hearing it. Like, it's gonna affect certain people. So I can't give it to you in this kind of way. But some people are just out there like saying That's whatever, dope, and it's like, yo, like, I don't care about who's listening to me. I just want to get paid. Like, it's bigger than that, fam. Like, you have to like. Why what you gives you shit? that though? Like, what is it like? You come from a place then, like, cause like you got like, like you got a good relationship like with your family and stuff then too. Like, do you think about like your your sister or something like with it? Like, yeah, how yeah. does it you like? Know, you know, you know what, you know what, 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 what did it for me, fam, was like, like I was like my music, like my music was like I'm not gonna say like it wasn't, it was like that, but I'm like I was a lot less like aware of like the effect my music had. Yeah. On like especially the younger generation mm-hmm. until one day I heard my sister knew every single word in one of my songs, fam. And I didn't even tell her that she did. Like I'm like, first of all, I didn't know she knew my shit was out. Then I looked and she knew every word to my song. I'm like, oh shit! So like, she's repeating all the repeating like all my crazy stuff. shit. They you use, feel me? Uh, yeah, and it's so like, like, oh, Yo, like now I gotta be careful. You gotta be careful what you say. Like that could be somebody else's. You feel me? Yeah. So like, I'm not gonna. I'm not saying I'm not gonna talk my shit. I'm gonna talk my shit. I'm gonna. T- I'm gonna tell my story, but at the same time, and like, 
Got to be cautious. Sometimes it's like, yo, like, I should, I'm, I'm, I'm going to word this differently or I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna paint this picture, but I'm also going to show you this side of it. Like, yeah. I'm going to show you, like, the shit I've done, the shit I've been through. I'm also going to tell you the shit that came from that, like, the good and the bad. Your music, you know, it sounds like it comes from a place like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Your music is about some real shit. It's about some things that, about the struggles that us... Black people, I, I won't even say us, like to say just me individually, like black people as a whole, you know, are subjected to constantly. And I mean, let's let, like to be specific, you know, you have a song, uh, Show Me Love, and it's like the hook in one of it is like, you know, there's niggas killing niggas, but this is what they want. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, I'm like, like I, yo, I lived in the States for a, for a little minute. Yeah. And like over there, like you really see it, like. Okay. You're starting to see it all here, Sally, but like in the States, you really see like how like pe- they turn like your own kind of against you type shit. You feel me? Like, mm. this is all here. Like, honestly, bro, I'm not going to sit here and say like, you feel me? Like, I was once the one of those niggas. Like, I was once ignorant enough to think, okay, yeah, this is like, this is it. Like, you feel me? Like, this is the type of shit I'm, I, I, I'm doing. Like, but as you like, as, as, you, as you get older, as you, as you get smarter, as you gain intellect, you start to see like, I mean, it's just stupid, like, you feel me, like, you should be trying to do the opposite of what you're doing, like, and this is not, this is not, this is not, this that didn't start with us, that started yeah. somewhere else. Yeah, of course. That was kind of, like, molded to, and changed for us to target it towards each other. That's why people out here doing certain things are doing that. Damn. It's just, like, feel me, bring down the whole... Your, it's your, a vicious cycle. Thing. Thank you for your insight on that. That's crazy how it, <laughs> that, the way it perpetuates... You know, and it's it's also another thing that we're mentioning in that interview, the way young black kids are used as weapons of mass destruction right. against their own community, against their own, right? Against your own people, fam. And it's like, I don't know, I be feeling like, yo, I be feeling like, like remember how that same interview, the people were talking about industry plans? Mm-hmm. I feel mm-hmm. like there's industry plans, fam. I feel like they'd be, they be given certain, like, they, okay, it's just like, yo, Pick and I know, choose. I, okay, you right there, I know you're a dumbass. Come over here. <laughs> you're going to say this. You're going to say that. We're going to put you in these clothes. We're going to say you're this, and you're going to go out there and make a song, and we're going to promote the shit, market it, and we're going to make it blow up so all these kids can hear it, and they're all going to be in- influenced by the shit, and yeah. that's who we're going to give the voice, and they're going to be seen as the face of hip-hop, and... You're gonna lead a fucking uh, army of dumbasses. It's usually an like, old white fuck? guy making that Who's decision. Who's making that decision, right? Fam? And these are the people who are in charge of the labels, who are doing the shit. So it's like, bro, like, okay, if we can't get you this way, we're gonna get you this way. Yeah. That's why, I, like, fuck that's yeah. why it's like, bro, like, I want to talk my shit, but it's like, bro, like, it's bigger than just me, like, feel me? So yeah, I have to try extra hard, not to like filter my shit out, but like, sometimes it's gonna be like, yo, honestly, bro, like, all right, cool, I'm, I'm a word it this way, or I'm gonna talk about it in the past or I'm going to make it a story like yeah. you feel me to try yeah. and not make it so like you feel me it's, it's it, you know it's really dope that you have that approach to it though because there's a lot of guys that don't really have a way of pro- processing it you know mm-hmm. they don't ha- they don't have like you know the platform of like going to go rap about this and like a creative way of doing it you know mm-hmm. a lot of the time it manifests in very ugly ugly ways you know it can fuck up your your mental health and stuff like that that's a big yeah, thing us black men don't like to talk about and is really not um addressed properly yeah, but sucks. you know these things that we're subjugated to and it's like a lot of the time it's only hip-hop is our only avenue to really talk about that I'll let this shit. to to really let people know um i just bought a boys in the hood shirt the other day i remember like that was like the first movie that like you know gave like a perspective to white people about like Bro, oh shit you know this is what niggas be going through on the daily you yeah, know yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of shit that's been doing that lately fam like what's that shit called when they see us oh yeah the fam. netflix one Bro, yeah watching that shit fam i just I couldn't. I couldn't do it, bro. Okay. I actually, like, my mom kept telling me to, my, my my white mother kept telling me, like, yo, you need to watch this. You need to see. I was like, I don't know if I need my day fucked up like that. Real you shit, know? fam. I watched that I don't shit. Know. I watched that shit at, at, like, what, 12 o'clock at nighttime, fam? I couldn't sleep, bro. I feel I like. Go, I have to go outside and walk around. Like, yeah. It's, it's fucking with me because I'm like, yo, like, I've been through this. I know niggas that's been through this. That's, like, you feel me? Like, it's crazy. And then it's like, okay, then me, I, I'm a thinker. I'm going to be like, all right, cool. So, Okay, cool. Somebody made this shit public. Now what? Like, is it yeah. gonna, is it going to change? They no. know about it now. Is it going to change? Yeah. Maybe, but like, the, the judge thing, has seen it and she's like, no, nah, I was still right, you know. No, like but she, the thing about it, fam, is like, now they know we know about the shit, and 
Now it's like if you don't change it, it's gonna like you feel me. You, you know what I'm trying yeah, to say? Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, before yeah. okay, when it was under the rug, it wasn't really a thing. Like I'm not obviously people knew about it, but not. It's on Netflix now, but so everybody's put seen to it. the forefront. But once you put like, it in the forefront and you still don't change this shit, now you're looking crazy, my nigga. Like now it just looks crazy. So it's funny because that's the idea, happen, right? Man. It's like, hey, yo, once we put this on Netflix, there has to be a change about it. Once everybody knows, once everybody sees, there has, has to, to be a change. But when there's no change. Then it makes the shit worse. Like we're still niggas. What do you do? Rich nigga, po nigga, phone nigga, hate whatever Jay Z says in that song. That house nigga, still a nigga. nigga. You still a nigga at the end of the day. Nah, but that's fucked up, fam. But nah, like they're, they're definitely doing a lot of shit. That's like that's putting like you feel me. He's putting shit out there, and I feel like there's a lot of people who are advocating for it. Some some people who have platforms are starting to use their platforms better. But like, um, you said that like you spent a lot of time in the states, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you find there's a huge distinction in that between like? African American, like American black men, and then Canadian oh, black people sure, in the fam. communities and stuff. For sure, fam. Just I find it interesting. It's if crazy. Because you, you've had a up close, you know, perspective on it. Like, you really saw that shit. And it almost. I don't, it's funny because the women of Toronto always have, like, a. Like, a an stigma, opinion. Right? Yeah, about, about, they have an opinion yeah, about yeah. it, right? The Toronto men and American men. Little, little right? do they know. Go over there and find out for yourself. Woo! Oh, is that how it is? I mean, hey, they can go find out for themselves. Okay, I'm not okay. I'm my states niggas. Okay, yo, okay. Feel me? You don't know what you have until you feel me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but nah, like, there's definitely, there's definitely like, there's definitely a difference, fam. Like, they like, they don't have as much culture as we do. Like everybody here, like yo, this is a yo. I've been telling people that I know from the states, like Toronto's a diverse city, dog. Like, yeah. There's so there's yeah. every your fam. You'll find anything here. You find any mix of people, any race, any culture, like. That's it's kind of live still. Like you get to be exposed to different shit. You learn from other cultures. You know certain shit that they wouldn't know. So when you go down, like me going down there, fam, and them hearing me talk, they're just like, yo, what? Yo, that's live. Like yo, yo, yo say, say something. I'm just like, say what? Like they just love hearing me talk just because I sound different. Yeah, than them, fam, it's crazy. Like I love the idea of that. You know that. Because it's like, that's almost like the stereotype that gets put onto us black Canadians, right? That it's mm. like, you're not cultured. What the fuck do you have in Canada? You have hockey and this. And it's like, n- nah, if you only knew, bro, if you only knew, if you came I'm to the city to and saw that, the bro. things that are on every street corner, not just black people, all the different cultures and Facts. subdivisions of life that exist, you know? That and sense, um, I know. I'd be trying to tell them that all the time, fam. Like, there's so much, like, people in this, they'll be like, yo, you guys ride polar bears. Yo, yeah. you guys... <laughs> You guys fucking eat maple syrup and like you feel me like they yeah. have this, the general fucking stereotypes yeah i'm just like yo you guys don't even know maybe like i can't speak i haven't been to like every part of canada but you feel me like outside of toronto it could be that way like but yeah Toronto's I mean, a different toronto it, it, is, it is different place. but that's it's like it's not the same as the rest of the of the, of the country fam that's what we're talking about too yeah, though like yeah. just toronto in in general nah, but toronto's like a different place, fam. um <laughs> I, I just love the idea of like you like a, a nigga from toronto just coming into school like, like a bunch of american dudes i'm like yo fam. like you you want to know what culture is like yeah y'all invented hip-hop which is still a shaky kind of fucking sentiment like i mean jamaica came over here and brought all nice. that shit. anyways that's a different conversation right um thank you for shedding your insight on that that was some real shit um and just i I guess when we stay on the topic of like you know we're young black people right and there's this famous line that i think uh, it was biggie and notorious big had you know either you sling crack rock or you got a wicked jump shot and that comes from you know the late big who was a great rapper right and there's this sentiment that a very old common one about how, you know, if you're a black person, you're a young black person, you got two options, whether to, you know, be an athlete or to sell drugs, right? Mm. And you being somebody that came from, like, that that's how we met, right? We were on the same basketball, same basketball team, team way back in freshman, way back. like, grade, I was in grade nine. We were the same age, right? Mm. Um you kind of took that to a high level for a bit, right? Like, you played basketball. Like, you kind of went with that for a bit. And then, you know, you're also doing, you know, hip-hop. You're making music at a high level, too. Like, you're getting featured on the radio and stuff like that. Mm. There's this duality, this this synonymous, you know, can't have one without the other relationship that kind of exists within hip-hop and basketball, and basketball, right? And I think it's dope that I can have somebody that has the insight and perspective on doing both you know that's dope and it's like 
there's always the common, you know, they want the the rappers want to be basketball players and the basketball players want to be rappers, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think it's wonderful for the culture, especially you know, Raptors. You know, we're out here. The Toronto That's Raptors scary. won that ring. We got that chip up. That's Hopefully, I check my phone after this podcast and I have something about Kawhi resigning, but. Hopefully, we'll see. We'll see. Like, we'll, we'll we'll see. see right? Shit that's already happened, bro. It's been, it's been kind of mine. But it's like you know, the Lakers are looking crazy right now. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to get back to that point, right? About basketball, hip hop. There's this, especially as we get, you know, as we progress more. There's more black people breaking ground in different industries and stuff like that. That it's like, yo, you can get education. You could do all these things that is not hip hop or basketball to create a life for yourself, to create, like, a, a, a mark for yourself. And it's, like, black people should, you know, expand their horizon on that. Like, there's there's a sentiment about that. But then it's also, like, you know, James Harden signed a $228 million contract, right? Uh, I mean, you can make a living off of hip-hop. If you have a tune core and you make streams and you have a fan base, you don't need to be on a world tour selling out you know, staple centers and O2 arenas, but you can make a living off of hip hop. You know, there's, there's enough for you to have a following and you to technically not be popping or something like that. Yeah, right. You so your fan base, fam, you rule your fan base, fam. Like, that's all that matters. Fam. You expand over time. It means just go to be heard. Like, but especially that relationship with basketball and hip hop, like, how do you feel like about it? Like, cause I also, you ever meet a nigga and you could tell he didn't play ball growing up. Yeah, yeah. You Honestly, did. bro, like, that shit instills certain principle, like, this is certain principle lessons that. in your life. Like, honestly, like, people that haven't had to have a certain kind of discipline to do nothing in life ever, you can tell, like, the kind of sh- people they are, the kind of shit they do, the kind of shit they let slide. Fam, if you play ball, and the higher you play, the higher level you play, the more discipline you're going to have. It's going to put you through, like, a lot of mental hardships like trust me fam but it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna make you like it's gonna make you it's gonna make you stronger it's gonna make you more disciplined anything else you do after that you're gonna do good in it because you've you've done that at a high level or you've dedicated a certain level of discipline to it like you're gonna carry that over into everything else you do like I can't always tell, especially it's it's so prevalent, like in the workforce, you know, like if you have a part time job or something like that, you can always tell somebody that like doesn't have a team mindset that doesn't have like that mentality of like not, social not being an individual doing something for the greater good of a group of people rather than just yourself. Just himself, yeah. And like, you know, I think sports and, and basketball obviously like incite those types of principles, like you said, but it's like. There's a cultural part of it too, right? Mm. There's a cultural part, like, I think it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's... They're they're both intertwined, fam. I wouldn't say it started, but somewhere when Allen Iverson came onto the scene, it was like, okay, you know, this is undeniable. Like, Mm -hmm. niggas, like, you know, be wearing the same shit that the basketball players are wearing. The influence of the shoes, the the, the sports wear, all those things that, that have... That um, all the, that all the right? back then were wearing the same shit. They were wearing headbands and music videos and wristbands and shit. Did you ever right. wear your jersey backwards? No, nah, no. Nah. Nah, you were on the wore, I wore, the, I wore the, what did I wear? I wore the, the, the armband, fam. Yeah, you had that AI sleeve. Yeah, yeah, I remember I had one sleeve. too. It was before I was old enough to have muscle definition. So and you like, have to put that on there so it looks like you have a little assault. You, feel me? Yeah, you have to yeah, like yeah. roll it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yo, even now, fam, it's like, like you see, like Rock Nation is signing like. Like hoopers, you feel me? Like yeah, they're I'm, signing hoopers. Like they're it's, that cultural crossover of sports and music, right? Mm-hmm. Like Jay Z is is signing athletes and giving signing athletes, athletes deals, man, giving them views. Big basketball. athletes too, like Victor Cruz's and Kevin Durant's, and mm-hmm. I think. Uh, well, I thought no, Kyrie signed with Clutch Sports. I thought he signed with Rock Nation, but uh, somebody else did he sign with Rock Nation? I, I don't know. Somebody it would make did. sense if he's with the Nets, but who the fuck signed with Rock Nation? I was just talking about the My Boy the other day, too. I can't remember. Fuck. I don't remember, dog. Fuck. I don't know. But, like, that's... I think that's, like, a big thing. That's, like, a cool thing for uh, tough. for the culture. You know? Like, Jay mm-hmm. signing athletes and, like... He's black-owned, too, so it's live. Because, like, it, it felt like he broke the ground on ownership with a, with a basketball team. Like, he had the thing with the Nets, then mm-hmm. sold it so he could be a sports agent. Now we have Drake, who's, like, an ambassador. You know, Wale, I'm pretty it's sure, has also uh, done things with the Wizards, like... Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it, it's, 
you know, you can say all this shit about hip hop, whatever. You know, it's just like a genre and perpetuates at the same this. time, though, fam. You see, Look at these niggas becoming but nah, wealthy. But remember what we were talking about before, how you give certain people platforms? Yeah. Say, the, say a dumb nigga goes and becomes an ambassador for a team because he's from the country and he's popping. Then what? Then you what? Me? You want a ring. Another you know? thing is, like... Budenhauser is doing press conferences saying, I can't stand Drake. He's up at night thinking about rappers in the, in the uh, on the sideline. Yeah. It's crazy, fam. But look, the same people that's... The same type of person that's putting these little dumb kids... Giving them millions of dollars to go do stupid shit with it, and be in front of people and have a voice and promote stupid shit, are the same ones that are only putting certain kinds of Drake, Jay Z, putting certain kinds of people who have a little bit of sense in charge of NBA teams. So well, that's it's picking and yeah. choosing, my nigga. Like that's the thing too. That's the only like if they're gonna trust anybody from that sphere, you mm-hmm. know, they're gonna trust Jay Z or Drake. You feel right? me? Yeah, why? Because they're credible. Because they're doing some. They're doing more than. The average person, they're not out there talking about nothing crazy. They're not promoting stupid shit that's gonna like bring people down. Like you, you know, know I mean? that's a problem that I kind of had with the conversation between Joe and Russ is that they they kept talking about like these thirteen year olds and everything. They kept talking about SoundCloud rap, like they kept mm. talking about all this like. And it's like, yo, I understand that those things exist and they're very popular subdivisions of our culture, but at the same time, the most popular. <laughs> 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 the most popular rappers are Jay Z, Drake, J. Cole, Kanye West, and Kendrick Lamar, right? Mm. You know, I will fight you on this show if you try and tell me that the nah, niggas nah, are nah. not bringing something to this they table, still, right? Like, I they're say not, the most popular, you know, but you feel me? They are popular, but they're like, popular. you know. You know, Drake may be super pop, but it's like he still pushes boundaries for the culture. He still does things. Kendrick Lamar, I don't I don't really need to outline like why that man is such a fucking big thing for our culture Mm -hmm. so yeah there's like niggas tatting their face talking about being leaned up and stuff that's like really popular but hip-hop's mainstream man like like we keep saying the 13 year old white kids know this shit you know my mom is on instagram keeping up with the latest trends on shade room and shit Mm -hmm. so you know it's it's mainstream culture it's every it's being consumed by everybody it's no longer you think that there's certain people that are more prominent in certain cultures like yeah. us, these people will be the people who are the head of hip hop or the front, the forefront of it. Yeah, bro. And then to this demographic, there's a different person. Why do you think Joe? People. Why do you think Joe's interviewing Russ? Like, do you listen to Russ? How many Russ songs do you know? I can't lie. How relevant is Russ to the culture? I can't lie, fam. After that interview. I was like, yo, let me go look up this guy. Right, guys. right. I but looked it's like, him up and I heard songs that I knew but I didn't know it was him. Okay, like, but like, yo, when you when you looked them up, didn't you see those numbers? Stupid numbers. Then you see the numbers, Stupid and it's like, bro, how do how am I so out of touch with this? How am I so unfamiliar with a Russ song that's apparently eight times platinum, mm. and, and I don't know about it? You know, like it's, you know, they, they kind of only have like like it's the it's white people, people that are listening yeah, to it, right? Yeah, like yeah. it's it's certain fan bases, there's certain niches, certain pockets of people that are listening and telling like who to do what, mm. and like you said, it's 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 like two or three or four niggas. White old men that are going, okay, we're gonna dress, we're gonna take you, we're gonna dress you up, and we're gonna make you look like this, and this is how we're gonna make your money, and this is gonna be your your image and stuff. Mm. That's why it's important for niggas like you that are on the come up that are gonna make that transition to having rust numbers and shit like that. That it's mm. like, yo, you need to own your own shit. Facts. So you can't have them niggas tell you that, you know. Tell you shit. We need fam, niggas need to, to own yo, them. I used to make my own beats. I used to fucking. Mix my yo fam. I used to do everything, fam. That shit was so strenuous. I was like, broski, uh-uh. needed some help. No, nah, I need help, fam. I need a team. I need fucking. I need to focus my shit into my actual craft, like writing. Like I can't be doing all this shit by myself. Fam. But nah, like the, what you when you own your stuff, bro. Like that's when it's the best. Like that's when, that's when you can't really. No one can take nothing from you. Like you own your shit. If you, if you happen to do good, if a song happens to do good, you see the benefits. Like, oh yeah. You're not breaking bread with somebody who had nothing to do with the creation process, like that's that's an idiot I think, fam. Like, why are you breaking? Why am I breaking bread with? Like, you feel me? At the end of the day, but by the same time though, with the same interview, fam, it was like, it was like, the label's gonna give you like, say they give you like half a mil. Some artists, fam, if they didn't take that little half a mil, even though they made like fifty mil off of their shit, 
for the little half a million advance they took that they had to pay change back, their life change their life so everything they would have never been shit yeah. if you didn't take that half a million that's the, that's the other side of it that that's why I don't like. fault the artist that's why I never this is what Joe was saying I don't fault the artist for doing that right. you labels who are know well what you're doing you know mm-hmm. offering somebody who came from nothing half a million dollars to do this cause you know the influence and the impact that'll have on a culture it's like yo Fuck you niggas, man. You guys are fucking up the culture doing that type of shit. You know? Making, inventing a character or a new person to do that. And it's like, you're taking advantage of him because you know he needs that shit. You know his mom needs that money. And it's... Facts. Yeah. It, it, it's a frustrating thing. You know, that's fucked still, but... Hey, man. Like, if you get a, that's why you have to know what, what your deal entails. Like, you have to know what comes with it. You have to know what's in there. You have to get your lawyers. You have to do all that paperwork shit. You feel me? You have to know, oh, yeah. you have to know how, how to... To talk well, to them, get what you want. But I feel like, yo, like, like you said, owning your shit. If you own your shit and you get yourself to a certain place where you made enough noise and it's all yours, and they say, all right, so this nigga knows what he's doing. Like, they're gonna work with you. They're gonna give you a better deal than they would somebody who just didn't really know much about the industry, didn't know much about owning your shit in the masters. Yeah, they're gonna, they're, yeah, they're gonna be yeah. like, all right, cool. Like, I can give this guy a shit deal. Just tell him a big number. Not knowing that he's gonna have to give me all this back and more later on, and then boom, you feel me? That's stressful like, shit, bro. As an artist, I fuck. Mean, man. It can be if you're not tapped in, family. If you're tapped yeah. in, family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah you, like, absolutely. Just, just know your shit. You feel me? Just, just know. Just you gotta know, know both sides, kids. You wanna be a rapper? You wanna make money off of being a pop and rapper and stuff? Gotta know what equals what. You gotta know the business. You gotta know the ins and outs of both sides. You know, and I think. That's kind of like what we're talking about. You want to own your shit and have that type of a relationship with your own art? Look into o- ownership. Google the business tactics. Bo- you know, Research. Educate yourself. Put yourself on a higher learning platform. You know? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> what a nigga off the buck. <laughs> uh, what else? What else been popping? It's free agency. While we're just still on NBA and basketball and black people and stuff, you know. Fucking it's free agency Lakers. shit. Yeah, AD at the Lakers. the Lakers. Jimmy on the Heat. Uh, what else? What else? Like like I said right now, I'm just way I'm scared to check my phone right now. If I see some shit about Kawhi joining the Lakers for a discounted price or anything. Um, that wouldn't even make sense, bro. I don't think so either. But like... I don't know. Like, he could just be in La La Land and, like, fuck yeah, I'm going to play for the Lakers. Like, I just won a chip. I have two finals MVPs. Why not win three championships on three teams? Yo, the Lakers might win, fam. Especially if they do that. AD, fam. And D'Lo. And, oh, well, yeah, D'Lo went to Golden State, but I hear they they might. Yeah, he went to, it was a sign-in trade for KD and D'Lo. Oh, yeah. Wait. Oh, yeah, 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 It was like a four. Yeah, there's like yeah, four yeah, other yeah. teams, I think, yeah, that were involved in it. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um... So, like, who the Lakers get besides AD? Just AD. Oh, shit. I'm not worried about them. They got three people. They have AD, Kuz, and Braun. That's their roster right now. Nah, nah. Fuck that. They don't even have... Yeah, that's like, they don't have a starting lineup. They're still a Gucci fan. They'll contend. They'll go, they'll go a lot further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Not, not, not. But you think, like, uh... Like, if Raptors re-sign Kawhi and Danny, that were eligible for a repeat... Yeah, like I feel like the the lead now is just more like even. Like, it's a little bit more competitive, you know, with KD yeah, leaving yeah. thing. Since Kid KD left, the ball what do you think of all of that? KD's not even playing next year though; he's still hurt, fam. So I, yeah, I, I think it is not as big of a deal as people are making it sound. Not, you know, bro. like KD went and got his one two ring. He's blessed. He said, "I'm out of here." He wanted his ring, like, but he's a waste man. Can't get it without without carry them. Well, I think it'll be really like it's like yo. <laughs> You needed to go to Golden State to get your to get rings. ring. But then you gave him the same nigga that you gave LeBron. Mm. And he beat the Golden State Warriors exactly. with that nigga. And I guarantee you don't get to the finals with Kyrie. Nah, I guarantee nah. in two years when, nah. when when he's back and stuff. He just did it for the contract. But you know what's crazy though? Take him Boogie, fam. Boogie left Sacramento. <laughs> Boogie got hurt. Boogie left Sacramento, went to Golden State on some shit like, all right, cool, I'm going to get my ring. <laughs> I'm going to get my ring, even this if I don't play. Didn't get This guy came there, got hurt, didn't get a ring one year, came back next year, got hurt again. Like, you feel you me? Know, the man's a, a loser. Ring. The man's just a straight, bonafide and, loser. And what, the man, and what the man did, fam, the man fucking, the man took a, a, a super pay cut, like, 
Yeah. To go to the Warriors, his pay cut went crazy. Yeah, he could have got twenty mil a year, and he and he got five like mil a five year. Five mil, fam. To average For two fifteen, years, to average average fifteen in the finals and, and lose and not get a tear ring. your quad. And now he can't go in nowhere because he's not worth shit because he didn't put no numbers up and he's just an injury prone nigga like. Just fucked up yourself. That's what you get for being greedy, fam. I think that's crazy. I was reading today about how there's no market for for Demarcus Cousins. Is there really no market? The Lakers I mean, won't sign him. No. The Knicks won't give him a max. No, this is, he's not getting no max. Fam. He's not getting no max, not but like max I can see, I can see the Knicks not giving, giving him a max. That's something the Knicks would do, you know. Nah, nah, they have my boy. What's his name? RJ. RJ, yo, shout RJ, yo, shout out RJ and shout out Iggy, bro. Shout out my little bro. Ignis Brasdikas, another one of you fucking hoopers I played with that uh, fucking went league, and now you're making way more money than like me. And I'm in my man, more than six man's went, dog. Like, how yeah. much was it? Like, eight, them eight two, and Iggy and RJ, and then um, there was a few. There was a few in the draft, wasn't there? Nikhil went. Yep. Fucking this next my boy from. BC went. Did Justin Jackson go, or he was a few that years was, ago? That was like a year or two ago. Still. Okay, okay, okay. But no, nah, they had a bunch of my boy that played for uh, Michigan. That's who, that's who you're talking about. Yeah, like, yeah the white yeah, boy, yeah, yeah, Iggy. Yeah. He, I played with him in high school when he was like a you you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a lot of man go still. That's, that's a lot. Shout out Canadian basketball and Canadian hoopers. You know, on this conversation, of, you know, whether you should be a hooper or not, whether you you know the, the synonymous of like you know we young black people and stuff. Nah. Bro, y'all are getting contracts out here. Y'all are breaking ground, you know, changing the landscape of what could be and what used to be, you know. So shout out to y'all. Always appreciate y'all hoopers. Facts. What else we doing? What else we doing? Um, what did you say? I mean, we want to talk about the culture, right? We talk about the culture, something significant that happened in the last few days. And I think it's interesting, especially to have this conversation as black men. Uh, you know, Lil Nas, who currently, Lil Nas X currently has the longest reigning, uh, number one. Yo, shout out that nigga for fucking coming on some country shit and going, how much, pla- how much time do you go platinum, fam? A lot of times. A lot of, a lot of times. Platinum. I don't know the number, but I know it's a lot of times. That's crazy, fam. Shout out young, uh, fucking shout Lil Nas, Nas X for, for breaking ground and, and doing things that nobody's ever done before. And then homie took to Twitter the other day uh, to point out some uh, some intricacies with his music videos and his imagery and you know the lyrics and things like that. And man came out uh, as gay, I believe that that's the story, right? That Lil Nas X came out on Twitter. Yo, how old is he? That's a good question. I'm pretty sure Lil Nas X can't be older than us. Like, there's no way he's not like he's he's not older than 21 or 22. You know? You think he's a plant? Do I think Lil Nas X, he is so transparent about that? No, I'm talking about industry. Oh, he's, he was born in 1999. Like, he is... He's yeah. a you, fam. He's a you. Is he an... Okay, what was the question? Is he an industry yeah, plant? Industry of course. <laughs> Absolutely, of course. My nigga, like, how are you... <laughs> how are you going to say he's not? The man is so transparent about it. He, he says it on Twitter every day. But how big of an industry plant is. Here's oh the thing... God. Yo, here's the thing about that term, industry plant, though, too, is like, you know, this is funny. an industry plant now is what a pop, any pop and rapper would have been back in the day, right? Because that was the goal, right? Is to get a record deal and to get mm. signed and to have a machine pushing you. Now it's like, you know, niggas got TuneCore and Logic, so you don't need to do that. But So they made the nigga the machine, feel me? Yeah. But okay. I'm I'm okay, like I'm okay with a nigga taking a check from a label and it actually working and then pushing him to the forefront. I just it's unfortunate that like you know that that label's making most of that money, yeah, right? Facts, facts. Um, but that song, that song was from the Platinum Fam. How you feel about him coming out? <laughs> hey man, that's his prerogative. I, I, that's progress. Shout out to him. Shout out to you. what's his name Nas X for going how many times platinum. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to him, fam. It's a good look for you. Know what I mean? Word, 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 word. It's a good, it's a good look for Lil Nas X, especially. Nas, you know, I, I it, while while we get off this, I just want to say it's a great thing that a young black gay man is has the number one song on the country Billboard charts. How angry these white people must be about that! Oh, that's great to hear. Anyways, shout out to Lil Nas X. Why you like this, dog? 
I told you you have to come on the left one. <laughs> Oh shit. Oh. We toxic as hell out here. <laughs> That's how it be. Where Puffy L's at? Is he coming back? I don't know, fam. Bro, oh, for shit. A Do you want another drink or something? What you got? Right. I got vodka. Do you want vodka? I'm over here drinking my, my, my Femi. Your Remy? My Lychee. You guys know what time it is, bro. You guys know when you see me, you see the Lychee box. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Femi. Yo, Rupert, yo, you guys need to give me a fucking sponsor, bro. What are you guys doing? I, yo, hold on. Stay, stay there. I got you. Nah, they need to give me a sponsor, fam. But I was thinking. Did the fan can't turn off? Huh? Fan can't turn off? It's hot, bro. Yeah, yo. Oh. Yo, Rubicon needs to sponsor me, bro. These guys are joking. What are you guys dealing with, bro? Yo, Rubicon, what are you guys dealing with, bro? Sponsor me, bro. You guys, you feel me? You guys Look see this me. this man put it on. You guys see me, bro. Spo yo, give me, the, give, give me that sponsor, bro. Is that joking? Yo, where you yeah. should where you should be looking for <laughs> something I was thinking about is like I literally before you came, I was like, you know, I don't know how many songs I know about Spalding. Oh you yeah. know, I don't know how many like about the actual ball. You want? No, no, no. Alright, cool, cool. But like, there really isn't like yo, you should really send that shit to Spalding, like yo, yo I, niggas. Yo, I tied I, them in it and they and they like the shit too, but they're they wish, liked they it, but they didn't mm, that they cheeses didn't. me. They didn't even fuck with it too. So, nah, they, they, I know they fuck, they liked it because they, they fucked Yo, with it. Yo, you need to make some clips of you like in the booth and then like you hooping and then like play that song in the background. Yo, is there going to be a music video for Spalding? There's going to be a video still. There's okay. going to be a video, but okay. that's going to be, I'm not worried about that right now. That's going to be locked down the line for us. It's doing, it's doing really well. It's doing it really is. well. On this one is, Go check that right here. now. Wave on Spotify, all streaming services. All, all uh, yeah, Spalding. There's no other song about Spalding. But nah, that shit's gonna do good, but we're gonna my nigga four or five shine. I gave him the, the, the honesty, you know? Yeah. Like, be in charge of the The video? The video still, so he wants to make it a short film. Okay. I can see that. There's a little storyline behind it. Especially after hearing yeah. your insight about it, like what that means to you and like, mm. okay, I could definitely see that popping off and so, being a thing. We'll see if that it's not set in stone, but like that's just an idea. That how about like you moving forward, like uh, like what like what's next for you? You're gonna do some like live performances. I did one still. Yeah. I did one on my my, my nigga Cam VR Planet. They have this Red Cup uh, event every so often. They have some artists come through and they were performing shit. I'm not really a performer, you feel me? But I was like, fuck it. Gotta have that element I'm though. Do it eventually, my nigga. So I went, did the shit. It was cool. Um, yeah. I did that. I performed Show Me Love. Nah, I performed Spalding. Uh, uh, Show Easy. I put my broski Show Easy. And I did, um, what else did I do? Sidebag. I did Sidebag. Yo, Sidebag video. Sidebag video is being shot. What? We're shooting that next week. Sidebag? That's not, uh, that's not up yet. I don't nah, even nah, feel like I, I heard gonna, that. I was going to premiere it here, but... Nah, not yet, fam. Then I might get an exclusive listen. You might still. Right? Oh, I'll, Stan. I'll pay for you. I'll pay for you. Start your own podcast. You might get them exclusives. But nah. <laughs> Sidebags. Sidebags coming this summer. So it's gonna be Sidebag sweet. this summer. Uh, what else? Anything else? Like moving forward with it? Um, I got a, I got another video coming before that. I'm probably going to drop it in like a week or so. Okay. Hood Cycle. Hood um, Cycle. That's dropping. From me. That's dropping in the next two weeks. Um, then we got the project I'm working on. Summertime. That's what the All project's right. called? Summertime? No, 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 no. It's coming on summer. It's coming like this summer? Yeah, this summer. This okay. Summer. So soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's July second, nigga. Like when yeah, is yeah. like August? No, no. Summertime, you know, fam. It's just the beginning of July. Fam. Okay, fam. okay, okay, Our okay. Time, bro, ski. This man's patient. The winter was super long. Yeah, 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 yeah. We live winter in Canada. Was, we gotta winter soak was it like, up. Winter was like seven months, fam. Nah, bro. I just cheese me. Winter was like seven months. They gotta give me some time, bro. It was very, very long. I couldn't wear shorts until I'm not even End sure. June. I'm not I'm even sure it's not gonna snow in like a week. Right? Man, be playing too much, dog. Enough time, bro. Yeah, Toronto but, uh, diverse, but damn, it's cold. Why you be fucking playing on niggas? <laughs> <laughs> Where can they find you at? Where can they find you at? Like, what? What? What's the ads? Me, follow me on Instagram, Wave Montega, Wave M O N T E G A. Mm -hmm. Instagram, on Twitter, feel me? Fucking what else? Go go go! Download the shit on Spotify. Go uh, save Apple that Music, shit. You know, 
put it on your uh, available phone, offline. You know, you want to listen to that shit when you're in the subway and stuff. All when you're that. when you're when you're taking a a transfer from fucking Bloor to Young, you know, and you like you know don't have no uh, data or anything. You know, you want to save them tracks. All the data, fam. Feel me? We've Montana on all platforms. Feel me? Thank you for coming through, yo. Thank you, you know, for fam. being part of the platform and you shit. Know, and like, you, you know, know, I fuck with the vision. Hold on, hold on. Actually, while we still here on camera, this is my new thing. You need to be the first person to do this shit. What's going hold on? on? Hold on, I got you. I already know what the fuck it is. Because it's like, Wavy. this table is going to be in all the podcasts, right? Oh, you're signing it. I need, oh, this I table? need everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Sign I'm, it as big as you want. I'm the first? You you're the first. Woo-hoo. You got first reigns on no. that. No, hold on a second. Yeah, move the mic, move the mic. Let me make my, let me make my fucking presence known, dog. For me, I have shit. Because this is where we're gonna be Fuck sitting, so this. every man that sits is gonna be shit. just gonna see that. You feel me? I got uh, uh. the pill. Put the pill. You feel me? Oh, he put it over the the crease. Yeah, <laughs> niggas gotta know I'm here. Fam. Hey. hey. Much yeah. respect, much yeah. respect, brother. I appreciate that. Know, fam, fam. Uh, Sunday's best podcast. We got Wave on here. Appreciate you for coming out. Uh, we gonna get you this full thing real soon. Get you them clips and everything. Side bags coming soon. Bro. Side bag coming soon. Side Go stream and soon. download all that. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. This has been the Sunday's best podcast. Ah uh, ah. Uh.